All right, so basically when we talk about configuring a site-to-site -site VPN, right, what we're talking about is connecting two racks or two sites together, whether it's a remote office and a regular office or all the other things that we've got cooking, all right? So things you're gonna need, you're gonna need your IP address on your external interface, the one that you poke into the 203 network with, okay? You'll need your Cisco 2911. You'll need access to the router's exec. So if you forgot what your executive password is, you get to reflash your router today. All right? Patience. I advocate patience on this one because it's going to be kind of weird. All right? When I was going through and trying to build this out yesterday, I was able to validate all the steps to go through, but it wasn't really what I would consider happy validation. All right? So patience. Remember write mem because I totally forgot to do that yesterday and I felt, felt kind of stupid today when I wanted to bring things up because everything went out the door. All right? <laughs> Another thing I forgot to do was back up my router config before doing this just in case bad things happen to good people because I totally horked my router. <laughs> I'm a winner. I can feel it. All right? Now, places I pulled the data from was basically I had to take three different sites to try to build this out for you guys, right? So routergeek.net provided a good step-by-step -step instruction just in case you need it right sam caldwell.net also worked out really really good it gives some good background support and gives some support for some of the terminology that's being used and then there's fred shack it's kind of convoluted but it was workable and i kind of use it as a backup resource in case everything goes horribly wrong all right so but this is basically where i pulled everything from router geek sam caldwell and fred shack all right, so the first thing you want to do, your first step is create a, what's called a key policy, an iKey, an internet key exchange policy for your router. So when you're in a router and you're config, you type in crypto ISA KMP policy nine, basically give it a policy number, right? And then tell it what kind of hash you want it to use. So remember, everything has to go through a hash value. So I just chose MD5, it's easy, everybody knows it. It's not a hard thing to do. It's computationally very low weight on your router to actually compute all this stuff and then authentication I just want to do pre-share and there's once the thing comes up the two will share the keys and then they'll make their own crypto key from those two shared keys all right so that's actually really not too bad in terms of how to do it there's other authentication right but pre-share lets the router negotiate the key so you don't have to take a USB stick and run it around router to router to router right it's not the most optimal but it will work all right then you want to set up a shared VPN key. So crypto, my favorite word, crypto, is camp key, VPN key address, and then whatever your external address is. So VPN key is the shared key you will use for the VPN, right? Now one of the things I was thinking about is because the VPN key is equated to a name, one of the things I thought would be really good to kind of help us out would be key R7 to R5. So if you're gonna connect rack seven to rack five, then I know what that key belongs to, hmm. right? So a real straightforward naming convention because you're going to end up with, you know, a key that says key R7 to R6, key R7 to R5, key R7 to R4. And that way if something's going wrong, you can actually go through and take a look at it. Hold your questions till the end though. All right? So just kind of help with the naming convention on this. And remember that your IP address when you're poking that in is the static public IP address of the other end. It's not yours, it's someone else's. So if you do this, it's gonna be crypto is camp key, key R7 to R5 address 192.168.203, whatever your external IP address is to your router. Because that's how they're gonna communicate and share keys. The routers. The routers, right? So you're actually poking in someone else's IP address, not your IP address. Because it makes no sense to talk to yourself, that's kind of like one of those weird things. You really wanna to talk to the other guy and you need to know where the other guy is and you have to do it on his public IP address. All right, set the lifetime of the VPN. You only have to do this once because this is basically a generic policy for every VPN you're gonna do. Crypto IPsec Security Association lifetime in seconds. If you choose 86,400, that's basically that key will stay the same key for one day. All right, and then we'll need to pre-negotiate a new key with the other router every day at a specific date and time after those seconds have run up. If you're really paranoid and you've got the bandwidth and the time to do it, you can, re you can have your crypto reset every five minutes. But for this case, I think one day is gonna be good enough that the crypto resets, All right? So it renegotiates a new key every day and it does it automatically so you don't have to, which is really handy, all right? Then set what traffic is gonna be routed via the VPN. 
Now, this instruction is really horrible. Access list AA permit IP blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I tried to break this out a little bit more. So here's what we got. Access list AA permit IP 192.168.203.25, the external IP address of your person with a reverse subnet mask, right? To 192.168.203.26, yours with a reverse subnet mask. And I have to actually go look this up. This one, will the arm mask is actually wildcard mask. And a wildcard mask. Does say wildcard mask. Yeah, I know. Okay. Right? So a wildcard mask is the mask of the re of the reverse subnet for a class C network. Right? Now you can bust it out to be even more. Right? I've just given you the flat class C. But it's the reverse of the whole thing. So just like DNS, mm -hmm. when you're when you're setting up your DNS in your in your tables, you have to do the reverse masks and everything else. Same kind of concept here. Cool. But I actually had to go look up what will uh, uh, ask Matt because I was breaking it out by oh. every single dot. What is a will DCA RDM? That's my initials. Ask. What am I asking myself? Right. <laughs> it was really ugly there for about 15 minutes before I started taking <laughs> little dots out of it and trying to figure it out. All right. Then you want to define what's called a transformation set. All right. These will be used for the VPN connection. Crypto IPsec transform set set name AAA BBB where the set name is the name of the transformation, and a transformation is what crypto you're gonna freaking use, <laughs> right? So ESP3 DES, MD5, HMAC. So basically you're saying use 3 DES or use MD5, right? 3 DES is very common. If you wanna change 3 DES to AES, which is more, which is a little bit harder to break, because 3 DES is very easy to break, right? So BBB and CCC, or AAA and CCC are the crypto you're going to use, right? And again, naming conventions are going to be really, really handy on this one because you have to go through and do this for each VPN you're going to do. So I would suggest that you do transform rack seven to rack five, right? Just so you know how you've set this up. All right, then you want to create your crypto map, right? So you go crypto map, map name priority, IPsec is camp. So set your peer is the external IP address of the person you're connecting to. Set your transform set to the name that you gave it before. Match the address where map name is the name of your choice for the crypto map. And again, naming conventions are going to be really handy on this one all the way through. Priority of this map is this map is the same priority as every other crypto map you're going to use. I'm recommending you just use 10 because it puts it right in the middle of the bell curve. It's neither more important than less important than anything else. All of them can be priority 10 because it's basically considered a separate channel. All right. The static public IP address of the other name, set name, the name of the transforms that we've configured in step five. And then triple A is the number of the access list that we created in step four. All right, so you tie it all together at the end. then we want to bind it to that particular process. So just like we bind a host name to a computer, we want to bind that crypto map to the router that we're using. So it's just crypto map, map name. Really straightforward. That one actually worked really, really good when I wasn't trying to figure out what wildcard and yeah, ask is. All right. So repeat these steps on the other end and remember use the same key along with the same authentication and transform set. So keep, let them pre-share the key, right? But make sure that your naming convention is matchable and make sure your crypto map name and that you're using the public IP address. And then let the router do the work once you've done that. All right? That way you don't have to run around with other stuff. All right? So for all the other VPNs you're going to create, you're basically going to create a mesh network. Repeat, repeat steps 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for each VPN that you want to set up. So R3, R4, R5, all of you will have five VPN connections in, in your router configuration when you're done. Remember to skip, skip step three, the lifetime seconds, because you don't need to do that but once. It's Excuse just it's on one time only. All right. And then verify your config, which is I really wish I had done yesterday. So show crypto is camp SA. You should see all five of your VPNs show up. Show your IPsec. All of them should show up. Show your crypto engine connections to make sure that they're active, right? So you can actually see if they've negotiated the key correctly. Right. If they haven't negotiated the key correctly, then they won't show up in your list. So you want active or inactive. Right? And then show your crypto map, and that should show you everything that you entered. Then write mem, and then do a show run and dump it into Angel. 
right? So you've got a backup copy there, right? And make sure that everything took after you did the right map. Cool. All right, so we had questions. Tony was first. Tony, what's your question? What's up? Okay. As it is, same thing. So I've already answered all your questions. <laughs> Darn. That's and there's no other qu the And there's no other questions? No. Holy crap. You mean I was oh. clear in my explanations? Uh, apparently not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> apparently not. Good. There you go. Now uh, I feel better. Uh, when we're searching file, uh, file SlideShare, SlideShare.net, mm -hmm. where specifically are we, um, how are we going to search this? So if you just go to SlideShare.net, R moral. R moral? Yeah, you should be able to bring up everything that I've, I've pushed it up on this one. All right. So you got it? Yeah. It's in there somewhere. All right, what was the other question back there? Eating food. Did you guys have a question? Yeah. All right, so we're good. All right, so we're good. So I've recorded this. I'm going to dump it up on YouTube here in a minute, so you guys have got access to it in YouTube as well. All right? All right. Go to it.